Hi, this is chapter 4 of the first SARS tutorial on creating heritage applications. The, the chapter 3 concluded by finishing up the uh, common functions of a heritage case uh, without the mapping, because I'd like to spend a little bit more time on going through the mapping. Um, we saved the case and I've gone back to edit and uh, the, the location info tab is where you'll see the, the main GIS center is located. The map that's shown in front of you is the uh, Google base map, uh, the, the normal map. Um, you can flip through the other ones available like the satellite map or the physical map uh, which are quite useful. Um, the uh, maps are separated into two sections. Uh, you'll see the base layers, and these are the ones streaming from Google itself. Um, and then under overlays, these maps I've set up uh, under our uh, Geo server, which is an open source map server. And it's serving up maps um, I've customized and placed uh, for uh, overlay on uh, to assist with the mapping. One of these is the 250,000 map. Uh, surveys and mapping, uh, the provincial map, uh, you can choose the municipalities, uh, or magisterial districts, um, and there's also the one in 50,000 um, overlay. Um, the thing to note with these is um, they can be a little slow, I don't have the fastest map server running at the moment, but uh, just be patient as you wait for the, the, the various tiles to um, spool um, and there are some gaps at the, at the moment with the 50,000 map in the conversion so if we disable the various shape files uh, you'll see there's a couple of little spots um, in the northern cape and the eastern cape that didn't pull through um, but for most of the country you still be able to use the one in 50,000 or the one in 250,000 map um, the reason we uploaded the uh, topographic maps is it gives you the property boundaries and some additional information on the farm names and so forth so which makes it a lot easier to place your proposal proposal on the on the map the Google map base layers don't provide any um, cadastral information unfortunately um, and so they quite difficult to map on. Uh, if you do have a KML file there will be an option in future to upload your KML file and that will do the mapping for you um, but uh, you can also email your case officer the KML file uh, or attach it to the case uh, but uh, we do insist on having all the, the cases mapped because this gives us a good indication um, of the types of developments and the stages of those uh, for the inquiry screens coming later on. Okay, let's zoom into um, an area around Kimberley. I'm going to make the uh, map in set the map in full screen mode. So you'll notice the little arrows at the bottom right of the screen. You click on that, and it pops up full screen mode. Okay, the particular Google map I've got at the moment is the physical map, but either the normal or the physical will give you the names of the towns. So let's go into Kimberley and let's go into the Flamingo Flay area, the north side of Kimberley. Okay, and let's enable our 250,000 map and we can enable the municipalities. Um, the labels from the municipalities will come through, uh, they uh, are from our map server. Again, just give it a bit of time to spool through and I might just disable the 50,000 map while I'm doing this. Um, the feature layer is the vector information which you are creating. If you take that off you will see that the polygons or dots or lines that you've um, created in your layer will disappear from view. So if you're creating a very complicated uh, development plan you can disable or enable this view uh, as you go along while you're scrolling through the other options. Um, let's zoom out a little bit again. Okay. All right. While it loads from our map server. Okay. The uh, first tool you'll notice at the top 
right is the polygon tool so that's for creating area shape shapes the align tool very simple you can create roads or pipeline routes and that sort of thing with that tool and the point tool uh, is appropriate for simple lat longs all of these can be used in combination and a particular development project can consist of all three in one um, uh, one layer um, it works a little differently to other GIS programs where the layers are kept separately for shapes, lines, and polygons, uh, or sh shapes, polygons, and points, rather. Um, here it stores all the information into a well known text file, uh, which we'll look at it in a little bit. Okay, so let's start with the polygon tool. Simply click on that and start drawing. And I'm moving my mouse and clicking on the vertices that I'd like to apply. Move around and then to apply the polygon, I simply double click. Okay, now my mouse is free again. I can then select perhaps the project will include some um, power lines. Let's say it will go over there and then join up to there. And perhaps uh, some points let's just do those for interest sake let's add one over there and perhaps there's some excavation work needed at those points okay great you'll see the property names are available to you so you can get a fairly accurate um, plot of your map that you need to do and that is it it's as easy as that um, to to wrap up um, click back on the um, the crosshair tool so that you disable the drawing tool click back on the full screen button and you're out okay now hit save and you'll notice the map is created for you under the location info now the view here shows just this polygon you'll notice that it's zoomed straight into what you mapped um, so the, the preset is set by default to zoom in on to the maximum extent of what's been mapped in that particular layer. Below, you'll notice the GIS layer describes what you just mapped. So the polygon is first, and that's all the points or the vertices that you clicked on. And then the line string is this line for the proposed electrical line. And then points are defined as simple latitude, longitude in decimal degrees format. Okay. You can again click on maximize, flip through the various layers if you like, um, and enjoy. Um, it's quite useful. Okay, the, the important thing to notice here is that other cases are not available to this map. That is uh, later the when you're looking up old reports or new, old cases. Um, but what is available to you um, is the SARA reports that were mapped up to 2009. And if you enable that layer, it uh, draws little red polygons. And these are identified by their map ID. And these are linked to uh, most of them are archaeological impact assessments uh, dating back to the 1980s, 1990s and 2000s um, and these are all available for download on our website and you can simply find the report by putting in the last digits of this map ID so 2180 for instance can simply be found by going to our search entering 2180 picking out um, a file okay and we will find 2180 this is the one here um, okay you could be a bit more explicit and specify a map ID and that will bring it up okay and there it is for PDF and that looks right. Okay. Right. Um, let's move back to um, 
our case. Okay, so we can simply hit the back button. Everything is saved. Um, our case header, all the information we captured earlier um, is listed. The hyperlinks will take you to a little bit of descriptive information about these uh, selections. The um, proposal description, the date is automatic set to when we captured this. Um, the date, as you notice, is now August the 17th because this tutorial has continued to into the next morning. Uh, from yesterday when we started chapter one. The case ID is unique. It's, uh, it's a serial number which uh, is uh, incremented uh, and is not controlled by anybody. Um, so you can reference the case by the name you gave it or the case ID or the case officer will refer to uh, their own numbering system uh, at the re relevant heritage authority. So you can use any of those numbers or even the uh, other authorities reference number um, the, the case can be found by any one of those okay um, as you'll see the additional documents all the EIAs and um, relevant documentation uploaded to the case are stored on additional documents the um, uh, heritage reports are not listed yet because we haven't uploaded any at this stage okay the case images pops up the lightbox module and you can flip through a little preview of, of the images and uh, these are as I say resized to 800 by 600 okay